Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to patch SQL Server 2019. And not only that, I'm gonna talk about why you wanna patch SQL Server 2019. A lot of organizations that I've observed over the years don't do a very good job of keeping SQL Server up to date. And if that's the case for you, you're gonna have more problems with SQL Server than if you keep it up to date. But going into a little bit more detail, I've got this blog post that you see on the screen, and I'll have a link in the description that goes into a lot more detail about it, why it's a good idea, at least in my opinion, to do as much as you can to keep your SQL Server instances up to date. Before we go any further, let's talk about how Microsoft maintains SQL Server. Ever since SQL Server 2017, there's been no more service packs for SQL Server. All they have are what are called cumulative update builds and then general distribution release or GDR builds. And GDR builds are mainly focused on security issues. They occasionally have other things, but they're usually security issues only. And cumulative update builds have bug fixes and they have new features and they just have a lot more fixes than you get in a GDR build. And I think most organizations are much better off installing cumulative updates instead of GDR builds. And what you see on the screen here is a list of all the SQL Server 2019 build versions, all the public build versions. And so it shows, as of the date of recording, CU21 is the latest CU build for SQL Server 2019. And so when you first install SQL Server 2019 from the installation media, you're gonna be on what's called the RTM build, build 15 2000.5. And you can go directly to the latest cumulative update once you start taking care of your SQL Server instance. So you don't have to worry about doing CU1 and CU2 all in order, just jump to the latest build. And so this is where you see what is the latest set of CUs that is available. And CU21 is the latest one as of date of this. And if we click on this knowledge base article, it will take us to the KB article that explains what's in this CU and all the release notes for it. And what you wanna get in the habit of doing is come down here and just read through all the fixes that are included in this cumulative update and see if any of those look like it's something that you're running into on your SQL Server instances. And that helps convince yourself that it's a good idea to install a CU and also helps you convince your organization that it's a good idea to try to install this SQL Server update. So now that we've read the KB article about this CU, let's go out and download it. And at the top of the KB for the CU, there'll be a link right here called how to obtain or download this or the latest cumulative update package. And if we click on that, it takes you further down the page and you wanna open up this top set of links right here. And then if you click on this, this actually takes you to the real download page for the latest cumulative update for SQL Server 2019, whatever it may be. And in this case, it's CU21. And you can see it's 751 megabytes. So that's not a huge file. And let's go ahead and download it. And depending how fast your internet speed is, that shouldn't take too long. And then once we have that file downloaded, we'll go in and do what we have to do to kick off the setup program. Now you might be wondering, how do you know if you actually need to patch your SQL Server instance? Well, the easiest way to do that is run a query like you see here. And when I do this, it's gonna run select add add version and also select add add server name. And this is gonna show me what build I'm on right now. And this is SQL Server 2019 RTM. It's very, very old. It's nearly three years old. And it's missing literally hundreds of bug fixes and many, many feature improvements have been added to the product since then. So I think I really wanna get up to date on this instance of SQL Server on one of my lab machines. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is before I actually kick off the setup program, I'm gonna check one thing that I've found to be a problem when you try to install cumulative updates, just to try to protect myself from having the cumulative update fail. And what I mean by that is if you right click on the instance and go to properties, and then you go to the database settings window and come down here and look at the database default locations. And if you look at the data default location, that 
file path has to exist on your machine. And hopefully it does, but if somebody went in there and changed it, SQL Server doesn't check it when it lets you change that default file path. And if it turns out that that file path does not exist, and you and try to install a cumulative update, it's not gonna check for it either until the very end of the process, and then it's gonna fail for the database engine. And I think that's kind of dumb, but that's the reality. And so make sure you double check that before you kick off a cumulative update. Now, after all this preparation and discussion, it's time to actually install the cumulative update for SQL Server 2019. And it's a good idea to shut down SQL Server Management Studio if you're running it locally on the machine that you're getting ready to patch, because that'll reduce the likelihood of having to reboot the machine because the files were in use that were being updated. So we'll go ahead and shut down Management Studio. And then here is my cumulative update file that I downloaded earlier. And I'm gonna double click on that. And it's going to extract it from the extract file that you downloaded. And that should go fairly quickly depending on how fast your machine is. And then it's gonna come up and actually go through a few steps before it kicks off the setup program. So the first thing is you have is a license screen and you have to accept the license terms. And then you click next. And depending on how many features you have installed on this instance of SQL Server, you're gonna see different things here. And the more features that were installed, the longer this process is gonna take. So we'll go ahead and click next. And then it's going to check to see if there's any files in use that are going to cause you to have to reboot the VM or the physical machine that you're running this instance on. And hopefully that comes up clean. But in this case, it's complaining that there's something that's running that's going to force us to have to reboot. And that may or may not actually be true, but just be aware of that. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And then it's gonna start the actual update process. And it goes in and shuts down the SQL Server service first. And then it goes through and installs all the files and makes all the other changes that need to be done. And how long this takes depends on how fast your machine is, your processor and your storage. And then again, how many components you have installed from SQL Server. So if you just have the database engine, it's usually pretty quick, but if you installed a bunch of other features for SQL Server, it's gonna take quite a bit longer to do this update process. But typically it's in the five to 10 minute range, unless you have a really slow machine and you have a lot of features on your SQL Server instance. So you can see the progress going here. And I may or may not, slow this down or speed it up, but it's actually going fairly quickly because this is my storage beast machine down in the basement and it only has the engine installed. So it's not actually taking that long to finish. And we'll see what happens when it finishes because it'll show us the status. And what we're looking for is it coming up and saying just what you see there. But also notice that it says computer restart is required. And that's because of that file, set of files that was in use, but everything worked. And if it didn't work, if you had some sort of an error, this link right here would take you to the installation log. That's just a text file that you could take a look at and try to figure out what the problem was. So we'll just click okay on this and then we'll close the wizard. And it turns out, let's go ahead and start Management Studio again and just double check and see if we actually got updated. So if we do that, we can see that the build number is not 2000 anymore, it's 4316. And in case you, know, you don't have these build numbers memorized like I do, we can come in here and run this little query, get version info, and then see what it says. And when we run that, it tells us that we're now on CU21. And SQL Server is actually running, but Again, the setup program told us that we should reboot the VM, and I would definitely do that in, in a production scenario, and I would do it here too, but I'm not gonna do it for the video. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out.
Really? <laughs> you have a lot to say.